this space is available for us that we can come and be um, together virtually. Um, and we are so grateful for Bonnie and all of the ways that she has led this group over the last many years and equally grateful for um, putting it on Darlene's heart to take the reins and lead this group um, moving forward. And we thank you for her leadership and her, um, her commitment to these ladies and to Paznaz and our church. And we are so grateful and we just pray a blessing over her. We pray that you will give her all of the strength and energy that she needs, that you will give her um, <clears throat> the wisdom and you will just be with her. And we are so grateful um, that she has said yes and decided to lead this group. We pray over this session um, for Natalia and for all these ladies. And again, we're so grateful for the ways that you have allowed us to be present with one another. In your name, amen. Amen. Now, as we have been in the practice of doing, we love to worship together. And Sharon and Carol have... Uh, spent time over at the church and recorded some worship music for us. So I invite you to listen as we um, worship together. Unmute your mic if you'd like to and sing along. And um, if that... Don't um, unmute because I'll hear that feed and then they'll hear it loop back. Bonnie? Does that work? No, they cannot. If they start talking, they're going to hear my feed, which is going to present the music. So don't okay. unmute. So Please. don't unmute. Just sing along muted. That's better for me anyway. That way you don't hear what I sing like. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go. And just so everybody knows, this meeting is being recorded. We are trying to launch to Facebook Live, but it is not launching right now, so I'll keep trying that. But just so you know, everything that we're doing right now is being recorded. <clears throat> so let me share my screen and we will go into worship time. Good morning, ladies. It's so good to be with you, Women in the Word, coming on campus today for this recording. I was thinking about you and Gilmore Hall all gathered together and our study together. We're opening up the study with Gospel of Mark with Natalia. We're looking forward to that. Carol Reed and I are together here to lend worship, moment of worship, before we go into our study. God bless you.
Okay, so now we're on to Natalia. Uh, I would like to introduce Natalia this morning. Um, she has become such a dear friend to me. And I think really the last time that many of you have seen her, she's been a very busy lady. Some of you might know that she wrote a book called Hermanas, and it's for uh, women in the Latin community to help them with their leadership. And then in addition to that, she married her precious husband, Miguel, who has been uh, just a wonderful person to get to know. And then right after that, we had a uh, precious uh, Michael born to us, who just celebrated his one year birthday. So this is a very busy mama, but Natalia loves the word of God and she is so dedicated to his service. And we are thrilled to have Natalia sharing with us, journeying with the supernatural Jesus as she shares with the book of Mark to us. So just thank her with me in your hearts that uh, she's able to lead us this semester. We are just tickled pink. Natalia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, darling. Thank you, Bonnie and Melinda and uh, Sarah and all the ladies that have been working hard to get this going. 
um, and for that introduction. Thank you. It's been um, it's been a little bit crazy, right? <laughs> um, very crazy. And so uh, we're just going to pray grace over all the technology, all the adjustments to Zoom. We're all used to having snacks about now from the snack table, having our coffee, um, smiling at one another, hugging one another. So it has been nine months since we've seen each other. So um, that's that's a long time. Um, so I'm just really grateful we're to at least see a little box that has your beautiful face in it. Uh, Ryan reminds me of the Brady Bunch. For any of us, do you feel like it's a very big Brady Bunch of 51 women right now <laughs> on Zoom? So um, I'm excited to be here with you. As you know, I the, that is true. The last time I spoke, um, I was pregnant and uh, then I had a baby I didn't speak and um, was going to come on the spring, and then um, the virus came came instead. Um, and then my husband and I moved to San Diego um, right around July, so we're in the San Diego area. So I'm no longer in Pasadena. Um, and so if you need fresh air, come on down here. Um, we're not perfect, but we ha don't have ashes or anything. So. Um, come on down and join us. There's some open restaurants and um, I could take you around. Uh, so we are going into the book of Mark. There's probably no more perfect study than for the time that we're in right now because we're looking at the life of Jesus. And so I, I titled it Supernatural Jesus um, and, and actually wrote this a year ago and sent it to Bonnie so that I could do it um, not being postpartum, just had a baby kind of stuff. So this has been in our computers. And so I didn't think it was going to happen. And the Lord was like, I need you to look at Jesus <laughs> um, right now. Not the fact though they're around and this virus, I mean, there's a lot of, dis there's a lot going on right now. And so my biggest prayer is that the Lord would give us dove-like eyes um, because doves don't see to the left or to the right. Remember, we talked about that in Song of Solomon. Doves can only see what's in front of them. And so we're going to pray that Jesus would be what we look at um, and he would fill our eyesight, fill our hearts, fill our spirits, because that's how we're going to go from surviving to thriving. Um, so let me pray for us and then we'll get started. Jesus, thank you so much um, for your faithfulness to us. Lord, thank you for the faithfulness that we see in these women who are going to become, we're all going to become Zoom experts in I think three to four weeks when it all the kinks are out and we know all the buttons. But Lord, I, I, I thank you for your faithfulness that you bring us back to the gospel. You bring us back to our foundation. You bring us back to uh, what changed all of our lives when we first our lives to you. And Lord, I pray that you would fill every time that we look at you through the gospel of Mark, you would fill that time, that your presence would be so real. And right now, God, would you fill the rooms that we're in, if we're in kitchens, if we're in bedrooms, offices, living rooms, outside, Lord, would you fill that space? God, we need you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. So I found my, uh, thinking about how we literally stumbled into this season. None of us had this on our agenda that we would go through a global pandemic. Um, we all have had things shifted, changed, uh, removed from our calendars. Um, we've had a lot of things canceled. Um, but the Lord knew exactly what was coming. And the Lord has prepared us, prepared each of you. Even though we don't feel prepared, he has prepared us for this time. And he did not stumble into this season. We did, he didn't. And so I just know that this is going to be for his glory. We just know that there's a, a good, there are good purposes to what's happening. There are already good things. Um, but Lord, we just, we just know that the Lord's going to do some, some mighty revival. 
Um, so we're going to look at Jesus because there's nobody better to prepare us for revival. And that's what I'm believing. That's what we're, we're all believing that the, the things stripped away are on purpose so that we can see him clear, clearer. Um, so uh, we're going to look at Mark and I'm going to tell you why Mark. like it's the book of Mark, but this is the whole Bible. Mark was what is the shortest gospel, and it is said to be uh, notes, Peter's notes passed on to Mark, which is his apprentice, his, his apprentice mentee. It was written around 64 to 68 AD. So if you like, just first of the four gospels written, it is said to believe that Matthew and Luke, Luke took Mark's gospel and laid it out as their foundation gospel and then added on to it. So it's a foundation gospel. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's the shortest and we're going to go everyone verse by verse for six months. I don't believe many of us have had this opportunity to be able to dissect a gospel this closely. So we're going to go through, obviously not every Tuesday morning, I'm going to highlight a story that the Lord highlights to me of that week. But in your own study time, you are going to be able to do line by line, verse by verse. We're not going to skip anything. And so right now we need Jesus. <laughs> let him fill your days um we feel very weak in this time i feel i know i feel very weak um now with the fires right in california we all feel weakened even more we've seen science limit us with uh, not having any quick fix have to wait a year year and a half two years for um science to really help right our economic Stability has become more unstable and probably will become more unstable in this next six to nine months. Our world is literally turned upside down. But humility is what's needed for the next things that the Lord wants to do. So I believe this powerful humility, this powerful weakness is going to be met by powerful encounters with him. I pray that that's not just for non-believers. I pray that that's for us. That as we're being stripped, we're being humbled, that we're being raised up in his strength. We're being raised up in his peace and in his hope that you cannot buy at the store. You cannot buy on Amazon. And so um, I'm going to be talking about the virus. I mean, I'm not our, right, but more the more our, our season, me talking about it, referencing it throughout the weeks, but I just know that there's nobody else that's going to make us stronger than Jesus himself. So we're not going to look at women and then look at Jesus or God through women. We're going to look straight up at him. Isn't that exciting? Straight up at Jesus. So this is why I, we, Mark is, is a very important gospel to me. That's why I first fell in love with Jesus. I'll explain um, in university, which is the, the movement I work for, we take students of Mark. So there's college students for the last 50, 60 years who every spring break gave their spring break to Jesus on Catalina Island for all the US. So they go to Jesus' life eight hours a day, okay? These college students, morning, afternoon, and night. And of course, they had their breaks. And we would look at the gospel of Mark and we would take out our commentaries and all that. And we would print it out with no verses, no page numbers, but it was like this. And so we would tell the students with markers, with all that stuff, highlight, repetitive words, highlight, and, and we're going to get as close to the manuscript as possible, as close to what the early, um, early Roman Christians would have received. So I forgot to mention that the early, um, the early uh, audience for Mark were Roman believers. Okay. So this is kind of written to the Gentiles. 
um, but it's the Roman ones. And so we're going to get as close as possible um, to, we're going to get as close as possible to the text. Okay. So with that, there's a few little rules. We're not going to be able to do it eight hours a day. We're not going to have commentaries though. Please, if you have a commentary, please bring it out. What we are going to do is we are going to limit ourselves from the scope of the New Testament and any other gospel when in discussion. Okay. The early readers would have only gotten Mark and the Old Testament. So try not to bring in John or Luke or Matthew. Try not to bring in Paul. Try not to bring in any of the letters because they would not have had any access to that. That was not written yet. Does that make sense? So we're just going to look at Mark and the Old Testament. And we're going to get as close as possible. Now you may think, wow, Natalia is taking away the New Testament from me. I'm not taking away the New Testament. I want you to get as close to, um, you actually get closer to Jesus and closer to this process of figuring out his life in this context. So it's the, to me, it's the purest context I've ever had in studying the word. It's where I fell in love with Jesus and fell in love with his word is because we're not taking it in the 21st century blocks context. You know, we're putting it right in its context and it's like puzzle pieces. And I love puzzles, putting one piece and one piece and one piece. Okay. So if you can't bring in the new Testament, really, you can't bring in any of um, any other gospels because those pieces were not given to the, to the first Roman readers. So it's the purest. Um, you get more involved in Mark's themes and how he read it. And you're actually able to go deeper um, when you simplify what you're looking at, if that makes sense. You will see the life of Jesus unfold in new ways. Because even in Sunday school and church, we've gotten clumps of the gospel. Well, but we've never gotten it from beginning to end, verse by verse. It's my favorite way of studying the word. We're going to get to do that for six months together. We'll take a break and then we'll come back in winter and we'll do just Passion Week. So it's going to be a really, really fascinating uh, time for us. I'm very excited. So I want to challenge you to come to the gospel of Mark just as we are in 2020 with the adult lens and with whatever lens we're in our society and ask Jesus, reveal truths, reveal yourself now. So this process was created, this manuscript process by a man named Paul Beyer and him and the bunch of men would do this. This is back in the six, back six years ago would do this every spring, the book of Mark, for 30 years. And every year they would come as a different person to the same gospel, but the Holy Spirit would reveal new things to them because they had different eyes. Does that make sense? So I've done this for 12 years straight where I came with groups of students and I would look at the same passages and God would reveal brand new revelations. It was fascinating. Now I'm coming in with a pandemic and with social realities. A 20 election, right? All of this is swimming around me. Now I need to come into the book of Mark and ask Jesus, what do you want to reveal to me in this season? 20 lens, right? And so I just wanted to give you all a few little um, stories of college students who started swimming in the deep end with Mark and with Jesus's life. No shallow end here, okay? This is deep, deep, deep stuff that builds onto each other. So you kind of don't want to miss the study and you don't want to miss a, a week. You don't want to miss it because you'll have missed a chunk in there. So you, it'll, it'll be very captivating and fascinating um, to do this. 
And I remember one year, um, it was, I was still at UCSD. I was a staff worker, brand new staff worker. And I was teaching for like the second year. And I had this young Japanese man in our group named Daniel. And um, we were coming to the end of the night and I was exhausted, right? I had eight hours of teach, eight hours of facilitating. They were in it eight hours that day. And we came to a hard, hard, there's some hard passages in Mark that we're going to wrestle with. And I don't give answers, right? They didn't have, I'm, I'm going to give you some things every Tuesday to think about, but I wanted them to discover on their own. And so I remember I would just, they would ask these hard questions and I would just go like this, look into the scriptures, look into the commentaries to wrestle with it, ask the Lord. And he says, and I remember him hitting the wall, <laughs> not in a violent way, just hitting the wall. And he's like, I'm not leaving here until I get this answered. <laughs> and it was so fun in this fun way to see college students just immersed in the word of God and wrestling with hard topics like blasphemy. What does Jesus mean by that? Or wrestling with just really intense topics that Mark's, Mark brings up about even the end times. I mean, we're going to go through a bunch of it. And, um, and this story was the story of the, pair, the, the four soils, which all of us, if you're in the church, grew up with. And this is the story that got them all confused, right? So even these childhood stories, when looking at it in its purest context, might be a bit confusing, so I want you to wrestle with your groups. I want you to wrestle in your table times. No question is, is off limits. Ask the obvious questions. Ask the hard questions. Like, wait, I thought it was like this growing up. Well, Jesus is going to surprise us. Because I, I did this when I was 19 as a freshman, and I was shocked. I went to Christian school most of my life. I went to church all my life. I mean, I was shocked at some of these passages. So in its purest context, it's going to bring up some things and it's going to be great. So we're going to wrestle. I pray that your fascination and, and you being your fascination with Jesus will grow. You be, be captivated by him in new ways. You're going to notice that there's these characters blind Bartimaeus, I call him. Then there's this person uh, who got healed this way and that way. Uh, this person was cast, demons were cast out of him or her. Like there's going to be characters in here. When Jesus walks in on a scene in, in the book of Mark, sorry, in the book of Mark, when you're studying it, when Jesus walks on the scene, he's going to shift everything. When Jesus when Jesus comes on the scene, he's a shifter and he's a mover. So when Jesus comes on to our twenty, we should expect the same. He's a shifter and a mover. And so he's going to heal, heal us in certain ways, physically, emotionally, maybe heal us from our addiction to all the junk that's out here. Heal us and give us new profound peace that we haven't experienced in a, in a while. And so I just, um, yes, I want to, I want to encourage you um, to get as involved in the passages as possible. I'll give you a little um, testimony of my own life. Um, I remember being a 19 year old, incredibly insecure woman who was dressed in jackets, sweatshirts, and overalls 90% of the time, insecure about her body, never wore anything tight. When your mother has to tell you to loosen up, you're too modest. That's a new day. But my mom did that. Hey, you're, you're wearing stuff all the way up here. I mean, I was just very insecure about my body. And, you know, everybody around me in college, like my roommate was anorexic, was ordering a ton of food, throwing it up. I mean, bulimic. I had anorexic friends. I mean, it was a very common thing. And I remember knowing that Point Loma girls, Christian school, right by the beach, 
were the Point Loma school at that time had to change their pipes every five years because the women vomited so much into the toilets. And so this was a very real thing for me. And I remember one break just almost doing that, just getting into that very cyclical mindset. And I remember studying, then I, then I was introduced to Mark. And I remember just weeping at the bleeding woman who comes to Jesus and, and puts her hand out. And I remember being so encountered and met by God that I, I believe that saved me from that, that path. And I, and I had an incredible encounter with him. And so like he encounters us in our everyday stuff and brings these ancient people and a very, very modern and relevant Holy Spirit with ancient awesome text is incredible because the Holy Spirit's so modern. He knows what's going to happen five years from now, thousands of years from now. He's so up to date. So this is up to date too, because he's going to use it in such real ways. So I, um, y'all know, if you know my teaching before, I like to have a prop. I'm a prop teacher. I think we can remember things better. And so I want to, I want to encourage you to look at the book of Mark as like puzzle pieces that ought to add on to each other. And I'm going to share with you Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, which is a great verse to think about as we look at Mark. It says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I'm going to repeat that again. You can put it into your notes. Proverbs 2, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. We all need wisdom. We all need understanding right now. It says, my son or daughter, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, store up my word, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So that's been my theme for Mark is it's like treasure and pirate, you know, like this kind of theme of like discovering treasure, looking for treasure. So this was what Bonnie, Darlene, Melinda, and I had in mind for what visually it would be on our tables. Okay. There was going to be a treasure map, one of those old school treasure, like binoculars. Okay. My dad made treasure boxes for each of the tables that he painted and did himself. I mean, we bought them from Michael's, but he painted them and we were going to fill each one with treasure to give you the visual that the word of God is like a treasure box. Okay. This was going to be our visual on your, on your tables. This is the visual I want to give you for this week and for this study is to look at Jesus, look at the gospel as treasure that he's adding into your heart, your mind, and even your body. Because when the word of God came in, Print out a treasure box, go to Google, put it out there, put it on a reminder. You can do that. I want to challenge you to come as if this is the first time you've looked at Mark, even maybe the first time you've, you've looked at it in this context, right? And pay attention to your heart. Where do you feel shut down? Where do you feel anxious? Where do you feel peace, energy? joy. Notice your heart coming into a passage and maybe exiting a passage, if that makes sense. 
our hearts are in a frenzy. Our hearts may be struggling with a lot of fear. A lot of my friends and I have struggled with insomnia during this time, right? Not being able to sleep well. So like, it's just a very difficult season, but there's nothing like supernatural Jesus to fill our hearts, these texts to fill us and him to give us revelation. Let's immerse ourselves and go deep, wrestle with hard topics, ask the obvious and the hard questions, and honestly, just ask questions. Just ask questions. Another exercise you could do when doing this alone in your week is a story that's being highlighted to you. Imagine yourself in the story. Put yourself in the story and ask Jesus to fill your imagination and that you would see it. And you would ask him, where is he and where are you? Maybe you've all of a sudden become the bleeding woman. Maybe you've all of a sudden become blind Bartimaeus. Right? Ask God to fill even your imagination to get as close and inside the story as possible. All right, so I'm not going to mark because I always like to teach after you get the week, after you've been in it. I don't want to give anything away. I want you to discover on your own in your table groups. I want you to wrestle first. And so next week's going to be a really, I mean, the Lord has been showing me. I'm so excited for next week. Um, but I want you to keep in mind when you look at the book of Mark, when you look at this week, let's just practice this. Note repeated words. I'm going to give you one immediately. Mark uses immediately a lot. So note very like repetitive words. How does Mark introduce the gospel? Very different from the other ones. How do you think the, Romans, the Roman Christians reading this would have felt reading about Jesus for the first time? I'll go through that again. Make a note of the repeated words that Mark has. How does Mark introduce this gospel and Jesus's life? How do you think the Roman Christians reading this would have felt learning about Jesus? All right. I want to make uh, an invitation. I want to give an invitation. Um, we're doing this in a new context. I don't get to be with you all afterwards. And when the last studies, people would come to me and ask questions. People would remark, wow, that was like, I needed that. Wow. I don't know the themes in which the Holy Spirit might be highlighting. See, I've done this 12 to 14 times in the book of Mark. But I was in person and I could tell, I was with everybody day in and day out. I could tell what was, whoa, God, you are highlighting this this year. I don't know what themes are being highlighted. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take my email address. And if you have a question and you talk it out through your small group and y'all still have that question, email me. I can't promise I'll get to it that week, but it may come up in the study that Tuesday or maybe I can get to it. I, I'm on my email a lot. Um, there's not a ton to do because every, you know, we live in this time. So on my email, I'll try my hardest to respond. I would also, if something hit your small group or hit you personally, like, wow, I've never seen that passage like that. I've never seen Jesus do, you know, all those things. Feel free and send me an email, a sentence, a paragraph. Oh my gosh, this hit me. I can't, you know, this has hit me so hard. I love this. Or wow, this, this really helped me. Then I'm going to see some things come up. Okay. I'm going to be like, wow, Roberta sent that. Bonnie sent that. And Mary sent that They're And they're all similar. They're talking similarly. Whoa. Okay. Holy spirit. This is what, does that make sense? So you don't have to do this. This is just, if you'd like to, um, but I would love to hear from 
And so I'm going to put them in the chat, but also um, if it needs to be sent in another context. Natalia Cohn, or I could just say it out loud and you could write it. Natalia Cohn, 333 at Gmail. That's N A T A L I A K O H N 333 at gmail.com. N A T A L I A K O H N 33 at gmail.com. I promise you there's going to be themes that the Holy Spirit's going to put into this study for us group of women. And so if you want to, I invite you to, to have a conversation with me on email. Um, if anything comes at you off the pages and you're like, wow, like, like I never knew he dealt so much with this or that. Um, and just be like, this is a theme I keep seeing. Please send me an email. If you have questions and that your small group's wrestling with, send me an email. Lastly, let's expect to be met, touched, transformed. Met, touched, transformed, not just taught, okay? We are past the time that it's just teaching right now. I'm just gonna study Jesus. No, 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 no. This is where sometimes the evangelical church falls short. It's not just teaching. It's I believe in transformation. I believe in encounters. I believe in um, new truths, right? Like coming in. And so like, I believe I'm going to change from this, from this time. And so, um, yeah, um, I'm done just a, a bit early. Um, didn't know how, how much I would take, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for us and I'm just going to put this back up and just expect some kind of prop every week that sort of highlights the thesis of that week. Um, remember, I can't, unfortunately, I can't talk about every passage, right? We're going through the whole book of Mark, verse by verse. But what hi God highlights to me, I will, I will do my best to bring that to you. So if you would love to pray for me during this time, um, pray through for the study, I would love that. It's going to be powerful. He is not limited by us not being in person. Okay. So he loves that we look at his word as a treasure and he's going to give it to us. Okay. So he's not limited. And guess what? We're not either. <laughs> we're limited in hugs right now. And we're limited in, in getting to see each other's cute outfits and jewelry and, and, and getting to go out to lunch. But, but we're not limited. The Holy Spirit's going to do incredible things in this time. Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I praise you that you um, had this a year ago planned out for us. That even though we're all stumbling into Zoom on a Tuesday morning instead of into Gilmore Hall, that we um, are never stumbling into your word, that your word is ready to receive us. Holy Spirit, you are ready to teach us, show us, transform us, change us. You're ready to reveal new insights, new truths, new revelations. You're ready to heal what needs to be healed. You're ready. And so I pray, God, that you would help us individually all to be ready for an incredible supernatural journey with you. That just because things have been paused or limited in our physical life, not me. Are on pause or that we're limited. We pray continued grace over technology, continued grace for each of us to get to our computers on a Tuesday morning or get to our friend's house if we're meeting in person. We pray for grace. And Lord, we pray over all of us that are interacting with people being sick. Even ourselves being sick, we pray for grace to cover our bodies, our hearts, and our minds. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. In your name, amen. Okay. I'm not sure who's next.
Um, so Bonnie and I are gonna go next. Um, Bonnie, why don't you go? And Bonnie's gonna lead us through the guidelines. Um, just since we are starting back up, she's just gonna talk really quick about some discussion guidelines. And then I will launch our breakout rooms. So Bonnie, do you mind? Okay, that's um, a good plan. Okay, the reason that I'm doing this is because we always do this. And of course, you know, we always do everything that we always do. So <laughs> that is not true. But um, we find that sometimes we forget. And especially right now with so much going on in our world, there are so many things that um, might come up in discussion that would distract us from the purpose. So let me just go through the discussion guidelines for you as we have been doing over the last number of years. They are designed specifically to keep discussion groups a safe place for people to share. And we want to continue that safe place. So we'll, our first guideline is to listen attentively without interrupting others and be careful not to start any side conversations. Anything that is shared by an individual needs to be kept in confidence. We don't tell anybody outside the group what anybody else has shared. We are here to connect to one another and the topic. So please share your experiences, but don't tell others what to do. We're here to talk about our own lives. And that means being careful not to talk about others. We need to monitor our sharing so there is time for everyone to share. We are very careful not to monopolize. And the last, well, almost last, please avoid talking about politics or any other controversial issues. And I know that is going to be so difficult right now with the elections coming up, but realize that through experience, we have found that anytime these kinds of controversial issues come up, it divides our groups and keeps us from having the spirit-centered conversations that we normally would have. So be very careful of that. And DGLs, please feel free to redirect a conversation if something of that nature comes up. The last one is to silence our cell phones, which you may have noticed that I have been very guilty of that this time because Melinda and Darlene and I have been in contact while we've been um, doing this Zoom conversation. And that will probably diminish until it disappears as we get better at this and um, we get everybody where they belong and uh, make sure that nobody gets left out. So I appreciate that you are here today and that you have stretched yourselves to get ready for the Zoom and be here. I love seeing your faces and I just thank you. And I pray that you will find great joy as we study the word together and grow into the women God designed us to be. Melinda?